Hi, my name is Randy Brown, and uh, for this uh, little informational film, this is for NLP Ultra, and uh, I will be dealing with how to spot a liar in this video, okay? Now, the first thing you need to realize is that there's four types of liars. Compulsive liars, pathological liars, uh, occasional liars, and professional liars, okay? Now, an occasion, uh, a, a compulsive liar he lies out of habit, you know, he does, there's no malicious intent behind it. And that's in contrast to a pathological liar. A pathological liar lies specifically to get something he wants, okay? And uh, then you have occasional liars, and this is where most everybody falls. And we all told a lie once and then, and now and then. And if you say you haven't ever told a lie, that's probably a lie right there. So it's occasional, it's white lie, doesn't mean anything, it's small lie. And then you have professional liars. And a professional liar is like a telemarketer or a car salesman or an attorney or a lawyer. These people lie to get your money. Okay? Now, I'm going to go into like uh, tells for a liar. Now, one tell of a liar is like touching their face, especially like covering their mouth. Okay? And, uh, you know, if they're doing this, if they're scratching their chin like that or like that, that's not an indicator of lying. That's an indicator that they're interested in what you're saying. But if a person covers his mouth like this, you know, or like uh, rubs the back of their neck, this is an example of a tell that you can use uh, to deduce if a person is lying. Then uh, next up is delay. Now, the way this works is that, say you accuse somebody of something and there's a delay. Like, for example, were you sleeping with Joey's girlfriend? And they go, no, I wasn't. How could you even think that? Okay, that delay is a signal of a lying. And then also, uh, there's ways to deduce interest and deception. Like, a person who's, like, listening to what you're saying and they're attracted to you will, like, lean in and kind of, like... Uh, give you their attention, but if you accuse a person and they go back this way, it's it's because one, they're surprised, and two, they're doing a backing away because it's kind of like an automatic escape me mechanism, like, oh, I'm backing away, I want to get out of here, okay? And then uh, next up is contractions. Now, a liar will not use contractions to emphasize their point. Okay, now, for example, who's, who's one of the most famous lying presidents of all time? President Clinton, right? Now, if you look at his speech, there's two significant tells. Okay, one is the absence of contractions. He said, I did not have sexual relations, and notice he's covering his mouth here, with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. So he didn't use contractions, and he covered his mouth. So those were two indicators of the, that he was lying right there. And anybody who wants to go back and study his body language can just pick it off right there. So, and another thing is closed body language. Now, what you've got to realize is a single facet of body language does not indicate anything. Like, an example of closed body language is a person who's crossing their arms, like this. Now, this can be defensive in closed body language, which is the sign of a lie, but another reason is that it might be cold in the room, and they might be trying to keep warm, all right? And then uh, crossed legs is, an, is another example of cold body language. And if, if a person is crossing their legs and, like, wagging their foot, that's a sign of impatience, which means they want this to be over with. And another thing is that a person who's lying will not use their hands a lot. Like, they'll have their hands in their lap, and they won't be moving at all. They'll be very still. That's one of the signs. And then uh, next up, we have a change in breathing. Now, after you accuse somebody, if there's a change in the breathing, if they go from deep to shallow, shallow to deep, that's an indicator of lying. Now, if their body... Now, it doesn't mean, like, if, if you're fast breathing, you're lying, or if you're deep breathing, you're lying, but the change after you accuse them. The change is what you want to look for. And speaking of change in uh, breathing, uh, when you lie, your body temperature rises because your pulse rate rises and therefore your blood pressure rises, and it becomes very warm, okay? Now, you'll hear it, a liar say this, 
Oh man, it's getting hot in here. Can we can we like turn the air conditioning on or something? Man, like open a window or something. You know, that's a sign of lying. And then there's another. There's a myth that I want to dispel right now, and the myth is this. A myth is that a liar will not look you in the eye. Now, a really good liar will look you in the eye the entire time. But an example of poor eye contact is somebody whose eyes are shifting around all the time. But an example of somebody who... Uh, another example of poor eye contact is somebody who's just staring you down the entire time. They're just staring you down and they don't look any other way. And they're, selling, they're saying, no, I didn't sleep with that woman. No, I'm... I'm I don't hate you, you know, stuff like that. If they're so poor eye contact is either looking away all the time or staring at you. See, like truth tellers have an equilibrium. They'll look at you in the eye and sometimes and then they'll be like, uh, and then look away sometimes. It's an equilibrium. Okay. And now another one is uh, for any of you people who watch V for Vendetta. Uh, Natalie Portman's character, Evie, points out a very good indicator of lying. And she's watching one of her co-workers on the news, and, you know, she goes, Oh, look at her. She always blinks when she lies. Mm -hmm. Excessive blinking is a sign of lying. Okay? And then next up uh, is when people ask you to repeat a question... Now, this is another form of a delay, but when a person asks you a question, when you accuse them of something, like, you didn't sleep with her, did you? I, you thought I slept with her? What? They'll repeat the question, or they'll ask you another question, and you know why they do this? They're buying time to figure out their story. They're buying time to figure out how they're going to lie to you. Okay? Now, one thing is when a liar is lying you'll you'll hear these phrases a lot uh, i'll tell you the truth man or or uh well to be honest or you know i wouldn't lie to you when i say anything that follows those three phrases i'm telling you the truth or uh to be perfectly honest or uh um you know i wouldn't lie to you when whatever follows that those three phrases is automatically a lie and then um also if you ever hear the phrase look i don't want you to think that i'm blowing you off if you ever hear the phrase i don't want you to think anything that comes out of their mouth after that is a lie and here's the reason okay let's let's use a typical example i don't want you to think i'm blowing you off well, you're lying because if you didn't want me to blow, if you didn't want to blow me off, that thought would have never occurred to you, and you would have never said what you just said. So you are blowing me off, and that's uh, that's one way. And then la um, next, uh, next is a change in subject. Now, if you are asking a liar a lot of questions and it's getting heated. Try this little tactic. Try changing the subject during the inquiry. Like, you know, you didn't sleep with her, did you? No. Well, after you, you've, like, accused him of a lot of things, try this. Go like, wow, this looks like a nice place. You know, how long have you had this place? Or, like, just change the subject. And the reason what you're looking for is when you change the subject... See if they're relieved, because if they're relieved, they'll be like, oh, he's not going to ask me about the lie anymore, I can just drop my guard. And usually after you ask him enough, like, questions about just whatever is going on in the environment, or like, you know, say nice house, or how long have you had this place, or, you know, how long have you known this person, when you change the subject, see if they're relieved. And if they are relieved, that usually indicates that they were lying. And then, now I come to the last bit of information that I have. Uh, now, this is for couples. And, uh, you know, there are men who are, and even women, who are really hands-on with people. You know, they, they touch them on the arm, or they touch them on the elbow, or on the hand. There's an old saying, if he ain't touching, 
he's probably bluffing because you know if you're talking to a person and you're lying to them you don't want to touch them because they could just smack your hand away and if they don't believe you they could you know do something wild and crazy so if you're a girl and you want to know if your person's lying or not uh, just remember if he's not touching you he's probably bluffing and he's probably lying and uh, those are the ways that you can spot a liar so there you go